Assalamu alaikum, namaste, hotep. Shalom alaikum, peace. This is Tracy Lene Muhammad, and I promise you, it's only be a few minutes of your very valuable and precious time if you allow me to have that, to discuss with you some of the thoughts in my meditation sauna session that I had. In my life, just like you, I've had things to happen through me that have left me hurt, betrayed, bamboozled, and angry. Most of those things I've learned to work through, through meditation, through fasting, and through releasing the person from my space with compassion and love. What came to me today is everything that's coming to my life has been a mirror to show me of what I am actually capable of doing. I just didn't do it. It came through me so that I could look at it and say, see, you could do this too but this is what it would cost you, or this is what it would do to others. So don't do that because it's in you. I am an amazing woman, but I'm also the flip side. I have a shadow side, we all do. I can do amazing things and I can do horrendous things. And when I look at my life that way, when I accept that, while yes, I am a very good woman, it is because I constantly make the choices to stay on the path of goodness. But everything that's come into my life, what I recognize now is because that's who I am. Every betrayal that I've had, that's who I am. So it was a mirror showing me, see, you can be a liar too. You're a liar, you're a cheat, you're a murderer. Well, all of the things that I've experienced through somebody else coming into my life was just me showing me who I am. I know that may not be something you want to look at, and I'm not saying that that's for everybody, but I know that when I'm able to say this person or this situation is a mirror to who Tracy is in her soul, soul work, I can release it. I can forgive them. And I, first, I can forgive myself for attracting it to me to show me me. And then I can decide that, well, I know that this is what I'm capable of doing. I forgive myself for being capable of this and I'm choosing not to do it, but I'm going to release that person from my space because they've done their job. They've done what they needed to do. They shown Tracy, Tracy. When I was sitting here and thinking those thoughts, I go into a space in my, in my mind where I ask questions. What is it that I need to know right now? What is it that I haven't let go of? Who do I need to forgive? What am I harboring? And I allow it to come without judgment and I let it go. And because I'm 51 years old, there's a lot of stuff going on on the inside, a lot of shame and guilt and fear that I have to let go of. But it's, it, it shows me itself through other people. And when I could sit here and say, you know, everything that you've experienced, it is because that's who you are. So what are you going to do about it? I know that some people will listen to this and go, oh, that ain't me. Stuff so I've experienced, I would never do that. And my grandmother told me many moons ago, when I was sitting in her kitchen at about 15 or 16, Judge Judy, myself, and talking about what I won't going to do, what I ain't going to do, I would never do that. Oh, she's so stupid. Why she do that? She dumb. She's stupid. She this, all of that. And my amazing grandmother just sat there. She did not judge me. She did not tell me to be quiet. She listened to me. And then at the end, she said, Tracy, you are going to do a whole bunch of those nevers that you never said you would do if you keep on living. And my grandmother was right. I have held people to standards that I have not held myself to. I have decided that somebody was not behaving in a religious way when I wasn't behaving in a religious way. I have decided that somebody should be punished for something they've done when then I say to God, ooh, please forgive me for what I've done. It is a journey every moment of my life to recognize that I am here by the grace of the creator and that so is everybody else. And when I offer compassion and unconditional love, which let me say this, I say it again before, unconditional love is not allowing people to walk all over top of you, stamping their footprint in your forehead and in your belly and anywhere else. That's not unconditional love. That is the mirror that you're still able to do those things. And so you're letting them do it because you want to be the good guy and they play the bad guy. Good, good cop, bad cop. 
So when I recognized that and said, you know, I'm capable of doing that, but it just came through them first because I, I, I have something bigger I need to do. So I can't get caught up in that the Lord desires because I'm capable. I'm capable of falling trapped to everything anybody else has fallen trapped to. All of the sins that we call deadly sins. I'm capable of every last one of them. And when I could say that to myself and then say, but I am going to choose a different way without judging the person that chose that way. My God, my life has opened up. I recognize that being with myself is not the same as being alone. And being with somebody is not the same as being, uh, is not being with somebody doesn't mean you aren't alone. Your journey belongs to you. And as I grow through my journey and as I know exactly what it is I'm supposed to do, I recognize that my philosophy doesn't line up with some people in my life's philosophy and they may decide to leave and I'm okay with that. I decide that I may make some choices that aren't traditional choices and some people may decide, nope, don't want to be in her life and I'm okay with that because I know that the people who stay in my life are the people who not only respect me, I respect them. I used to think that when people did things to me that I'm supposed to, you know, they're going to get punished. Karma going to get them. I'm supposed to hate them. No, I'm supposed to be compassionate and understand that they just did it to me before I got a chance to do it to somebody else. That's why I came into my life. I'm in a really good space now in my life. And as I go into the next decade, I know I have a lot to offer the world. And I'm okay with doing it with nobody around me but me. I don't need anybody else to tell me what the creator, the divine has for me. I don't need a middleman. For me, religion is that middleman. I don't need that. I did need it at times until I got my my uh, my legs on, until I, until I recognized that, Tracy, you can do this. You just have to trust yourself and you have to, one, accept that you too have a shadow side. And if that came into your life, it was to show you, look at yourself, girl. Look at what you're capable of doing. You going to do that? I read a story once about this woman. If you ever heard of, of Frances Shovel Shin, she wrote a book called The Game of Life and How to Play It. And there was a woman whose husband was committing adultery. And she just, and he, she, the husband left her for the other woman. And she berated that woman up the street, down the street, and around the corner. Only to find herself a year later involved with a married man. Yep, that's the way it works. When you berate somebody for something, you're probably going to end up doing it more so so that you can learn to be humble and maybe not. So tools, because I love to tell you about tools because it's getting hot and I want the phone to go off. Some of the tools that you can use, tapping, meditation, deep sweating through sauna, yoga. I'm a yoga teacher. Let me help you. Let me help you. I can do that. Thank you for your time. You've been absolutely instrumental in helping me to know that I'm doing the right thing. I salam alaikum, namaste, hotep, shalom alaikum, peace out to Brooklyn and everywhere else.